That's it. So any questions on analyzers, sample lines, PLCs? Or anything, because it's open for QA. Yeah, anything. We didn't talk about. I think it's open enough. Uh, a lot of times, someone will come specify to the sample line. A question will come uh, come up. Just like in the summer times, you can run the heated sample line if it goes out because of the running, it's still running. It seems like the data is normal, and it's been it's been our instruction from the line department to, that people know because of the caveat, especially under Part 60, where it says we're talking about operating under normal conditions. We know the data may seem to suggest that the heated sample line is working well because the sample line isn't actually working normally. We would say validate the data, not try to do that. Just curious, how many upgrades do you, have you done online? We do them online. Uh, pretty rare these days. Uh, it's, you know, it's only two hours. That's the reason you might be able to get away with it. PLC upgrade. Um, so, yeah, PLC software oh, you know, fix. Why yeah. does this work will take? Four five hours. Yeah, it took a full day for when we did when y'all did ours. But with us, we had enough downtime along. Well, a lot of times from what I'm hearing, it's it's not even the downtime issue, it's the availability issue. You're getting paid to be available and there's work being done, you get big trouble because they're not available. So they don't take that chance. It's available, period. But your question, Scott, was doing the switch out while the unit's running. Correct. Right. Not so the unit is still available, it's still running. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we just run it launch. There's different interpretations of that because I've talked to people about that. And they go, if we don't have an emission system, it's not available. Yeah. Now, that's their interpretation, not necessarily yours, but that's what we're running into. Is we need a fully compliant system with an emission system that's fully embedded in the I think it matters what your state regulations are, yeah, what you're it. dealing with. Right? Yeah. If your regular if your regulator is okay with doing the switch out while you're running, then you're available. If you switch it, if you go to California where they say we can't, then that makes it unavailable. Right. I guess you're out of field. Well, and it's even harder when you go to South Coast because it's you know how many we don't have South Coast people. In the South Coast, the sense is always whether your unit's running or not, the SIMS is always collecting data and it's, it's averaging that data. They're like, they're changing that out. Yeah, I know they are, but they haven't yet. And so uh, as, as they change to the new stuff, that was always the caveat. We had a plant that got an excess emission when the plant wasn't running because their CO emissions exceeded because of the cars that were driving by on the highway. Right. City of Burbank. Right. 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 No, <laughs> uh, one of my technicians um, is his old system, I, I guess, and I don't know the details I'm going by what I was told, but so so the, the, the analyzers measure the data that the DAS adjusts it based on the calibration of information, and that's the data that's stored in the system. Yes. Technicians are really interested. They say it's helpful to troubleshoot if you can get to the raw data as well. Is that stored? It is stored. Okay. We, we, no, uh, we always store it all. I thought once that was kind of a new thing. Yeah, yeah. So we've been doing that for the last ten years. So if we're not, then it's how do you access it? Uh, one of them is called CalCorrected data or non CalCorrected data. Okay. So it's in CR. That displayed on real big. Yes. It's corrected versus non corrected. Yes. Yeah. I know it's displayed, but I didn't know it was. Yeah, yeah. that's the way we display it. 
Okay. It's there. Okay. Yeah, and part of the rationale behind that is you have to do one of two things. You either have to say what the correction factor was and store it, or you have to store the two data points and then you know the correction factor is after the fact. Well, it's much easier for us to just store two data points and then store the and then figure out what the correction factor is after the fact is being big than it is to just store the correction. Factor. Sure. That's a lot easier to do. Yeah, they should both be labeled. And they should be labeled as such. And back to the point, if you weren't here a couple of years ago when Bob did this presentation, he was funny because he came and he said, well, this is only like five minutes long. I said, what are you thinking? I don't have to worry about it. An hour and a half into the discussion, we finally have to stop because there could have been people fighting about this, <laughs> physically fighting about it. it was, it's a very uh, touchy subject for a lot of people. By the way, there is a switch to turn it off. So if you don't want Cal correction, you just go ahead and turn it off. And then it doesn't happen. So if you don't want that to happen, you're, excuse me, the data to be Cal correct, right. it'll turn it off. And for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, Len will write a book. Sorry, I'm going to cross it. Uh, we'll write something up and put it on the website about what Cal correction is so you have it, so you know what that means, what it means. Uh, basically, what it amounts to is the analyzer basically has a zero and its band value every day. It zeroes it back out. So, one of the things that um, there was a company that did it on the fly. It, anyway, it doesn't matter, it's an analyzer company. And every day their analyzer adjusts itself. Well, now you're adjusting something that's already been adjusted. <laughs> And so it would never work. Before we do the calibration every day, it goes back to uh, slope and intercept of one and zero. So you have that value back to its native state. Then once you get a span and a zero value, then it can tweak that number based on that linearization. And so that's how that cal correction works. And it kind of got a bad name because they kept correcting the correction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and there was a company that was doing that. I was like, oh my God, they never miss. Yeah, because it was, it was corrected every day. I was like, oh. But no, we go back to the zero state, to the base state before the count every day. You said and then it's readjusted. one when we need to count. Right. And so that's how it's adjusted every day. But we'll, we'll write something up and put it on the website because that's a pretty good topic. That, yeah, I like that. Already it's already heated, it's heated, heated, and then you kind of give you a little background. So what you mentioned water gas a little bit ago. I, I, That's I'm here to talk on those too. So um, we've had a couple of issues over the years where I think it's a, some kind of switch fails and we freeze the water bath. Um, so my question is, how, can we, when you guys install those, can you put in the right, I, I might get the terminology wrong, the appropriate thermocouples that we can put an alarm on it for low temperature? This has come up a few times. Yeah. Low temperature, and maybe you went to help me out on this one. Um, the problem with low temperature is that, you know, that was operating from 36 to 38 degrees. So, freezing temperature 32. Okay. So, you don't have a whole lot of measurement uh, there that you can really tell where it's going to fall. Uh, once it's frozen, it's going to be 32. Well, the, 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 what the, the issue is, is when it freezes, and I know we get you get low pressure alarms and low flow alarms, all that stuff, and we're aware of it. But at right. that time, your analyzer is reading whatever air is in there, and we've had to report deviations based on, you know, like you said, the, the Burbank thing. So, um, one of our plants on their own, they installed a, 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 an alarm at 33 degrees to give the techs enough time to react to it before it freezes solid, so we don't have a compliance reporting. Is that a talk right now? Russell City. Because they kind of asked me about it, and I said, "Well, yeah. you give a shot to that." So, I mean, we're in the we're in the process of having all of our plants put in that system, and I don't I know that there may have been some communication with you guys, and I know you know we don't want it to go high because then you have a, a you have a an equipment problem on you on the on the equipment end. But from a compliance standpoint, it's important that we catch it before it freezes solid because then we're we're not reading emissions and we're reading who knows what. Well, we've had a couple of ours freeze up too, and it's not only compliance issues. I mean, I've got yeah. in the foot, uh, the tubes have cracked. Yeah. 
He was a negative. Heavy. Yeah. Oh, wow. We saw Franco um, from Triple Bulletin. He said they look cool, and I believe they have an output. Is that right? Okay. Uh, uh, just to replace it with the old mechanical old sensing. Okay. Where? Eric, where did you just place the sensor? Where did you take that? It's it's the same. The same as your bulb. I can tell you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. not it's what? No, no, it's it's on. Same it's the same same as where your sensing bulb was for your mechanical. Oh. It's yeah, just going same thing. That's just stuck out. Oh, you want to take it right now? Because you don't get. You're going to freeze. You start freezing around the right. copper coils. Yeah. It. So this was just measuring, measuring, measuring the bath temperature. You're saying you took the bowl out and replaced it, replaced it with a new rank of temperature control. Oh, that's what Eric was suggesting. The yeah, digital, we'll try to go towards there was it. a new digital style. Rank, rank, Ranko, I believe, is the brand, and uh, it's just a digital controller. Um, and you can change your hysteresis. So if you just want to go up and down one or two degrees from your set point, you can do that. I, if I remember correctly, I believe it had an all output. I don't call it. So we put that in our, our SUMAT site and the nitrogen site. If you want a high end or the low, then. Yeah, but as far as I want up, like the hysteresis would go yeah, it's down true. plus or minus three. All these are whatever, whatever you set up. Yep. R A N C O, I believe. I'm just curious, I mean, how much does that is it benefit? Because it can use. Once it's easy, so now I think that long to freeze. So once it's freezing, you still have some problems. Right, unless there's a long, that would be the just this is that you can identify quicker. Right, keep it yeah, just to free. catch it before it freezes, that's all in, so you don't have both equipment and compliance issues. So that, that'd be great if we could make that standard as far as the. Oh, okay, that's a very cool controller. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. Yeah, I think we paid 50 or 60 bucks for the push. Yeah. This is just a digital kind yeah. of mounted up. Not at all. You know, I, I'll just go out on a limb here. I went to Campbell Lodge in Puerto Rico. Their water masks were 23 years old. We replaced them with brand new ones, and they were still done. That's how reliable that water bath is. Yeah. Uh, we have any issues except for the cracking on the corners for your uh, to keep level because if it froze, you know, you get the yeah. A lot of times, what happens is on the cooler, and we had a period of time we had a brand new guy in the shop and he didn't put nuts underneath the bottom side of the crack and it cracked because somebody stood on it. I Oh, it was just some place. Yeah, that was very poor. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we've cracked two of them, and both of them freezing. Now, one they had local HVAC shop repair. The other one was down to the. Which tubes are you talking about? The, the, the coolant, coolant tube? The, oh, in the water itself. Oh, the Teflon tubes? No, in the water. No, the copper tubes. Copper tubes. Copper tubes. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever heard that. Oh, I mean, we've trolled multiple times. Two of those probably happened. Other times, okay. so I think it's something to prevent. It's it's solar solar it's probably benefit. Do you know why we think it's because of circulation or because of control? I think it's because of that that thinking situation, the you know, the hysteresis of the. We've had to change those multiple switches. So those, uh, we've always had problems with those not staying. They either swing too much or something. There's something that the individual control. Yeah, because you can change your switch. Well, you know, in, in a Cisco system, we've always had two stages of drying a system. Got the primary dryer, which is the refrigeration cooler, a water bath, or a thermal electric cooler. Then we put down the three hundred and ninety degree dryer, location. Okay. So the dew point of the sample reaching the analyzer is in the minus twenty degree range, depending on how dry 
there is some areas. Yeah, we will try it in one of the municipal areas. Yeah. I guess for the area minus 40, at sample viewpoint, it's going to be minus 20 plus or minus if you want to put down even further. Okay, so that eliminates the criticality of running the primary prior at two degrees of freezing. You can run that prior uh, refrigeration in the cold water bath at 40 degrees, as long as the internal temperature in the shelter, in every case, could be 90 degrees. You won't get any condensation as it passes through the filter and whatnot. And when it gets to the membrane dryer, the membrane dryer will take the rest of the same moisture out in the gaseous phase. So, uh, all our examples are, are set at 40. It's set at 40. Okay. I say it's freezing in other summers, you know, failing it somewhere. I've had people who try to set it right down to, you know, 35 degrees or something much closer to that. And it's not necessary. You've got the second fire in the system. But how important would you say the placement of that circulation point is? Yeah. Yeah. Once that circulation pump stops, now you've got dead water. And um, yeah, you can please kind of have you had circulation pump failures? We have we we had a couple of those failures. Not too many of those. They're just little fish things. Don't put fish in Because um, you know we at work heating station and uh, we have a small staff, so we're not man 24/7. So if it's a long weekend and they have a failure on a Friday night, it could be Tuesday morning before someone comes in and sees a big block of ice. But it, you still get an alarm, but it may not be as critical. Uh, but you, you would get the back. But they would hit the alarm. Well. Um, it depends on if our Sioux Falls dispatch would call them out. But if they get an alarm and uh, before it rains, then they have time for the dispatcher to call the guy out and come in. Or is it a problem? Yeah, we'll go over the answer. We need to figure out something better. So. Great system. Any other questions? We're, we're, we're over time, but at the same time, the guys are here. So, one, one of yeah. my kind of bring in, Charlie, we're talking about uh, correcting the correction. Uh, just a reminder when you guys did talk about us rather, uh, whenever you guys question, go to under part 75 to make sure where you run your rather setting the bias back to one. Otherwise, you're just biasing a bias that you need to. Well, that's a I good point. Before you go back to that point, the raw data is in the database and you can read yeah, the yeah. report. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you have to run the app, but you will have to rerun the report. Yeah. You yeah. Get it. But, <laughs> but a lot of times, it's like most people who don't catch it, they submit it to rebuy it, re it, but they can't, they don't have to rerun the test. Right. I got, I got two more. Okay. Um, so when the system goes into calibration, it sends a signal to the DCS that the analyzer is in calibration. 
correct? Um, and so one of our sites, we have an SCR knocks in, which is a, a separate set of calibrations. I, I, I mean, anyway, Cisco, are you aware that we that you would send different signals to the to the to the DCS um, depending on which system is in calibration, or is it always just a single signal? Because because what happens is, uh, you know, the the DCS is getting the signal that the system is in calibration, and therefore our um, our NOx control system yeah. is is off, right? But in reality, when the SCR NOx analyzer is in calibration, we would like it to not to to to, to start using the staff NOx engine to help control our, our NOx or you know regulating ammonia flow. And we've had some compliance issues because if you're in calibration for 30 minutes and you're right on the edge, you don't have enough minutes to get out of it to average it back into compliance. Yeah, it's it case by case. I mean, a lot of times those signals can be dictated by the A and E because these are the signals we want from the CS. Right. Um, but but have you, have you seen it, two different signals? In, yeah. It's if I see a requirement for, you know, one in Cal, it's an SCR system and a Thursday system, then there's two signals on the SCR Cal. Two signals. And your PID for Charlie is going to control. On those two different values, because the RCR inlet NOx is getting the higher concentration, much faster response. Stacks going to be a very low concentration, it's going downstream in time. You get a VTAC when you open your control to the CS, you have to have two programs in. I, I, I mean, every plant's different, but the SCR NOx usually isn't used in the in the control system. It's, you know, it's not. Not typically, I don't think. I mean, that, the SCR NOx value is probably not changing, but if you change load and you don't put in more ammonia, then all of a sudden your, your, your stack NOx is, is going to go high, right? And that's our challenge. We come out of calibration and instead of a two or a three, and we've got 10 more minutes to get under two, and we can't be keep up. So if we could save seven minutes of calibration time to to be back in normal ops when the SCR NOx analyzer is in calibration, that would, that would really be helpful. I always understood the reason we had an SCR NOx analyzer was primary control your ammonia injection. I mean, you could use the stack as a trim, but... We use it to calculate when you slip across process. Well, yeah. You know. Just to calculate, just to calculate it, not to regulate it. But no, you're right. I mean, we have lots of different ways to do it. Tuners yeah. usually use that for turning the engine. So that's what you use Yes. Yeah. So I mean, who who should I talk to to see about? I don't mean, I mean this is this is out of my out of my realm of expertise. I don't know about DCS signals and what's going on with that. Uh, I'll throw him the bus. Start with Brian. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Brian, we can go from there. He'll he'll direct it to the necessary people. That so that that's what happens when you don't show up. He's on get through. I know he's here, <laughs> and I know he can hear me. So. For those of you who don't know Brian, Brian's our uh, software guru on the configuration side, the customer support side. And Brian used to have a ponytail that looked sort of kind of like Peggy, but uh, and Brian doesn't have a ponytail. <laughs> I saw it the other day, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. I was, and I've known Brian for a long time. He's had that ponytail the whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, he doesn't have it. I've known Brian for a long time. He's had it. 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 He's it shuts down the, all the all the control logic, and, and you know as 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 the emission limits get tighter, we need you know to, to you know 40 minutes of, of, of data to average is better than 30 as far as compliance. A lot of a lot of times the signals aren't indicated by the AD. Yeah, we may not even get those signals in. We have just a SCR not in balance signal. Which is kind of the same thing, basically the same thing. Or we won't even have that. And what we do is we hold the signal get the SCR clock during calibration. So you don't have to jump in. 
Gotcha. And, we, and we probably, you know, once we understand that, then we'll have to go back to the DCS and make some adjustments there probably. Okay, good. So my, my last thing, um, and I think this is something we've talked with, with, Brian, with Brian before, but, um, you know, you guys are logging into our system on occasion, whenever, um, is there a way in the DAS to, to log when people dial in and when changes get made, I mean, that's something that you're interested in. I don't know. I don't know if it's available or. We've done it in the past. It's a manual function. That okay. We do. Uh, we've done it, and usually it's because we put a little look at it or something like that to yeah. log those changes in there. Uh, it's a question that's come up numerous times, and I brought it up one year, and there's dead silence in the room. We said no. Uh, but an electronic log book of some sort. And, you know, of course, that was six years ago, so now we're six years down the road, and maybe now is the time. Electronic log book makes sense. I mean, we specifically, we've got log books out of the shack, but it's log books for what goes on on the right. 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 Yeah. Uh Yeah, we'll explore that. Uh, I'll get with the software group and we'll see what we can do to make sure that that happens. Uh, they have protocols back home where if they make changes to configuration files of the PLC, they have to report what those changes were into their historian, where they check in and check out the program, so that we have the latest version and we know what changes to make. That's their protocol now. Uh, doing that on site would just be one action added layer. And they're going to do the same thing. So if they type it on your system and copy it, paste it back into their system, you don't really have to go to the system. So we could definitely add some. I'll go over this. Over time, thanks for taking the time to come this year. Uh, it's a weird year. Uh, last year was weirder, but it was weirder <laughs> because we thought it was right. Uh, but uh, hopefully next year we'll be back to a little bit more normal. We have some uh, ideas to improve uh, this week, uh, every year. And so if you have any ideas, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, and if you don't know my email address, just get on our website, go to info and send it, and it comes to me. Uh, and I'll get it there. And any suggestions that you have would be uh, if you have topics that you'd like to see. Uh, it has been suggested that we have breakout sessions. I would that this year, but I knew we were going to have limited attendance, and I didn't see that that was to start that process. So we'll probably do that next year where there'll be some hardware, there'll be some software, and the breakout sessions will probably expand it to two days in order to accomplish that. But I think uh, all in all, people will be pretty pleased by those. The training classes going on back at Cisco in the next couple of days. Analyze your training was yesterday and tomorrow, and then repeated again on Thursday and Friday for those who signed up for the later class. And then uh, software training starts tomorrow. That's at Cisco as well. So we have uh, the Cisco thing going on back there. We do ask you to bring your mask with you when you come into the building. We have a lot of workers that are in there, and they haven't agreed to all of you being in there. And so if you wear your mask when you're inside the building, that would be ideal. Uh, so that probably has a form for you to fill out. Uh, yeah. When you show up in the building in the morning, just a quick fill out the form, you'll sign your name, and everything's good when you go to the building. It's all locked when you get over there, but a lot of people watch in the door early in the morning, so uh, they can let you in and make sure everything's in a little bit. Thanks for coming. Uh, if you want some hummus, there's plenty over here. Yeah. <laughs>